Back here on Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning, Steve Cashel and Dr. Greg Nicholson from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, one of the Bulls and White Sox team doctors, filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. Time now for our Ask the Doctor segment here on Sports Medicine Weekly. We give our listeners the opportunity to have Dr. Nicholson and usually Dr. Cole address their specific sports injury issues. You can send your questions on our website, file them at sportsmedicineweekly.com and you can go to our homepage, look for our picture on the right side, Dr. Cole and yours truly, and there's a link right there. Or you can uh, call in every now and then. We've got a caller on the line right now. Kyle Wagner is a medical student in Peoria. And Kyle, thanks so much for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. You got a question for Dr. Nicholson this morning? Yeah, thanks for having me, Steve and Dr. Nicholson. So um, my question is a bit of a two-parter. Um, Young, young professionals who are looking to stay in shape and not have to worry about injuries down the road. Um, how do you recommend they should be exercising? Should we be doing alternating high-impact, low-impact sports every other day? And then more broad, broadly, um, is there something that you think young adults aren't paying enough attention to with regard to their exercise? Kind of a, just a broad recommendation or anything that you can give? Uh, Kyle, it's... It... It's a great question. I think a lot of people are wondering, okay, how can I be most efficient? My time is uh, precious. I'm under the gun. Uh, how do I get my heart rate up to a certain you know, level where I'm going to have good uh, cardiac uh, positivity without hurting myself? Uh, you know, There's a lot of things out there now, um, muscle confusion, low impact, high impact. Uh, You know, a lot of people uh, were runners or are runners. It seems to be the most efficient way to get the to get that uh, the runners high, get that uh, caloric issue going and cardiac health. But what if the weather's bad? What if you've got a bad ankle or a bad knee? So I think any us human beings, you know, we get bored. So if you can alternate what you're doing, like you said, Uh, a runner or uh, an elliptical or um, yoga or Pilates and some of the other things that are out there now um, where it is more jump training or um, I don't want to name, you know, companies, but it's so key because the, the, the goal again is 45 minutes, right? So, I think anything we do, we need to alternate. Uh, But if you've got an area that's a little iffy, you know, you got a knee that had a meniscus tear or something like that, you got some back issues, you want to find something that is sustainable for you. Uh, For the second thing about, you know, what young adults may or may not do, again, I think this goes away from exercise, but it goes to nutrition. Uh, You know, we're under the gun again, we're we're moving fast. Uh, America is the fast food king. It's about nutrition. Uh, that helps you, you know, you are what you eat. You fuel the engine properly. I think it helps your your workouts, um, whatever they may be. And I think you have to choose what really works for you. Uh, I think sometimes people force themselves into a, an exercise program that somebody recommended and it doesn't work for them or they're, they're having some trouble with it. And, of course, of course, the other thing is if you can do it with a friend, it, you're always more motivated with it. So I think the the, the the three take-homes. Number one, half an hour to 45 minutes a day of cardiac health. Number two, uh, try to focus on nutrition. And then number three, uh, probably if you can do that three to four days a week, I don't think you have to do it seven days a week, but three to four days a week, very clearly uh, research has shown that that has the best benefit for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Kyle, thanks for joining us here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks. Again, it's our Ask The Doctor segment here on Sports Medicine Weekly. Our second question comes from Jason Bird. Uh, Doc, this one's for you here. I had surgery two years ago on my right shoulder, and from my understanding, they took some bone spurs out, shaved down my collarbone, and removed some cartilage. Shortly after surgery, my doctor left practice due to health issues, but my shoulder is still not right. What should I do? Uh, Well, the, the balance of the question sounds terrible, right, that they shaved down a bone spur on your collarbone. They took some cartilage out. Now, this is a very common constellation of events in a shoulder surgery. I'm a shoulder specialist, so 
this is a, a distal clavicle resection and probably uh, an impingement operation. Now, anybody, that's a very common operation people should do well. But if your physician has left practice and maybe your therapy was okay, you're having some problems with it, um, we need to know what that problem is. Uh, have you lost a little bit of range of motion? Is one area of your pain completely relieved because the surgery was successful, but you've uncovered another problem? That's the shoulder. It's a bunch of joints and spaces and compartments all working together because it's the most complex joint in the body and has the greatest range of motion to any joint in the body. Thus, for him, I would say, look, the American Shoulder and Elbow Surgeons, uh, they can go to their website. They have a find the doctor, guys who are uh, shoulder and elbow specialists, uh, also a sports medicine program or a sports medicine specialist who does over 50% shoulder, and I think that's his best bet. Um, in in the practice where this where his physician had retired, there may be somebody or there may not be. Uh, obviously, a second opinion uh, can give him a, a different look at this, um, but it doesn't sound as bad, I think, as his question sounds out to be. But he needs to go and be proactive and find that information so he can feel better about his shoulder because right now it seems to be hampering him. There's another doctor out there, right? It's okay. You guys have to retire every now and then. (laughs) Good stuff. Again, it's Dr. Greg Nicholson sitting in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. I'm Steve Cashel. It's Sports Medicine Weekly here on 670 The Score, and it's our Ask the Doctor segment where we give the listeners the opportunity to have our doctors address their specific sports injury issues. You can email us or click on the link. It's uh, sportsmedicineweekly.com. Info at smwhome.net as well. But go to our homepage on our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com, and underneath our picture, you can click on the link and ask your question. We'll do our best to uh, to get to it each week here on Sports Medicine Week. Got one more for you here, Doc. Uh, this is kind of short, but this is right up your alley. How do young athletes get meniscus tears? Steve, the meniscus is, uh, there are two menisci, if you will, the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus in the knee. Uh, They are load-sharing and load-bearing structures. Think of them as almost like a circumferential wheel chock for the medial aspect, the inside, and the lateral aspect, the outside of the knee. The knee uh, loads and twists a little bit. Obviously, it bends, flexes. Uh, So when an athlete or anybody gets out of a chair or uh, goes down a stair, uh, they load that knee and twist. Because the meniscus is a load sharing structure, it can kind of get pinched in a cam effect, loaded, and you can tear that meniscus. And that can happen in a 16-year-old playing basketball or or football. Now, obviously, that's younger, uh, more compliant tissue. Uh, It can happen in a college athlete. It can happen uh, in us weekend warriors. And I've, I've had people even just get up, you know, they've been to dinner for two hours, and they get up and they turn a little bit wrong and, and, and get it there. So uh, the meniscus is exposed that way because of the unique anatomy of the knee. So it doesn't mean he did something wrong. It's just uh, the most common uh, arthroscopic surgery in the United States is knee arthroscopy for a torn meniscus. So it, it's common. Well, in torn, um, there's, there's partial tears, and then also you guys can remove that. But then we hear about bone-on-bone bone and arthritis, right? We hear that with basketball players every now and then. Derrick Rose went through the torn meniscus situation, and, you know, we hear it's frayed, and then it's torn off, and a little piece is taken out and all of that. So a lot of options there. The vast majority of meniscus tears are small, and you trim out the torn part. And remember, we said it was a wheel chock, so it's kind of – a wedge shaped in cross section. You're still keeping that really, really thick rim intact. Uh, you're trying to remove as minimal meniscus as possible, uh, but there are some really bad tears, some very extensive tears, what we call bucket handle tears and the like. And and most of these tears are not repairable because cartilage is not vascular. Uh, it has to be a very peripheral tear uh, to repair. So. The vast majority of meniscus surgeries that trim out that torn part and leave good meniscus behind. You mean vascular as in the blood flow, right? Correct. Blood supply to that tissue. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to ask you a question, though. When I hear of uh, this question saying, how do young athletes get meniscus tears? How young? What's the youngest you've ever done a meniscus tear on someone? Uh, 15. Really? Yeah. Okay, because I've heard Tommy John surgery. We had... uh, 
you know, Dr. Jimmy Andrews on talking about doing Tommy John on nine and ten year olds is the youngest he's done Tommy John surgery. I'm thinking meniscus tears. They're you know young uh, soccer players, maybe nine and ten, but uh, more like the fifteen sixteen range then. Well, I think also to create that injury, you've got to be big enough, strong enough, powerful okay. enough to generate that force. So I think you're probably looking at the older scholastic athlete, the 17, 18-year-old and above for the most part. All righty, good stuff. Dr. Greg Nicholson filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. I'm Steve Cashel. Again, that was our Ask the Doctor segment. We do it every week here on Sports Medicine Weekly. If you want to get involved in a chance for the doctors to address your specific sports injury issues, go to our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. You can click on underneath our picture and then... um, Give us your questions. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the Chicago Marathon. Big day tomorrow here in the Windy City. Talk about best shoes to wear, how you recover, best advice for running and recovering from a big marathon. So stay with us at Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.